بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سجد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والقرآن الحميد واستعين بالصبر والصلاة صدق الله العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصدون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله واجب الاحترام حضر فيك سلطان ناجح القادر شاب واجب الاحترام to be to head of the shop, what you would exam, will I my exam, elders, buzurks, but as in Islam, my sincere thanks to Qibla Pisa for inviting me to this masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him more ability to serve our village and in this community of ours. Um, a beautiful masjid in which we commemorate the great sacrifices and great story of Karbala, the city of the Shuhada, Imam Hussain, that's what Allah Ta'ala and however, I do want to start with uh, two or three important points. The first one, which Qibla Lama Sahib has mentioned already, is that Inshallah Ta'ala, in a few moments' time, we will see and witness the, the Starbandi, the graduation of one of the students of our Hifas class here at Hazrat Sultan Babu class. So we offer our sincerest congratulations to the students. We offer our sincerest congratulations to Qibla Pisa. And indeed, the great Hippus class teachers, the likes of Bahadi Jamil Sab, who work tirelessly to ensure that our youngsters, they have the best possible start to their spiritual and academic life. Um, I think it's important to congratulate and to remember how this center here in the heart of Birmingham still ensuring that the Qur'an is always top of the agenda. We must remind ourselves constantly that for a young Muslim, the best possible start for life is Hifz al-Qur'an. There is no better way to ensure their development in their early years. We will find, and this is something that I have noticed and I am sure you have in your community, that when a student learns the Qur'an early on in their life, then later, when they go to GCSEs, when they go to A-levels, when they go for their degree, uh, they have no trouble whatsoever. Why? Because the Hifzul Qur'an has given them that academic confidence. It has given them that physical and spiritual strength that nothing now seems difficult for them. When it comes to their exams in school, in college, in university, it's a walk in the park for them. And their whole attitude is almost a spiritual swagger about them, a confidence. And they say that, what's so hard about GCSEs? Well, I have memorized the Holy Quran. And these are not my words. In fact, these are the words of our master, of our beloved, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said in a report recorded by Imam Ibn Adi, rahmatullahi alayhi, that man jama al Quran, matta'ahu ta'ahu bi aqlihi hatta yamuta that whosoever memorizes the Qur'an, Allah ensures that his aqal is always the strongest in his community. That he never has any difficulty when it comes to intellectual prowess. So it is our duty to congratulate the Hafiz Jumeel of his wonderful team. My du'as are always with this brilliant team who have made the Hippus department here in the city easily the best in the Midlands, perhaps the best in the whole country. That the level of confidence that we have seen from the Bukhaji Karam, from the Shobai Hippas here in Sultan Babu Trust, is unparalleled in this land. So our du'as are certainly with them. The second thing, and I um, take great pride in this, may Allah accept it, I have put a small gift for you, that inshallah ta'ala at the end of the market, I want everyone to take away. That we are in the season of Muharram, we are remembering the Ahlul Bayt Ridwanul Laiti Alayhim Ajmaeen. And what we have done very recently is we have taken a work from a great Hadith master and professor of the Qur'an who lived about five, six hundred years ago, Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti Rahmatullahi And we have revived one of the brilliant works on the Ahlul Bayt. So this work here is called Ihya'ul Mayt, Bifada'il Ahlul Bayt. 
the resurrection of the dead with the supreme reality of the Ahlul Bayt. And in it, there are 60 ahadith of our Messenger Ali Salatu Wassalam extolling and highlighting the virtues of the household of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So please on the way out, you have Nayaz ready for you. This is your Ilmi Nayaz. This is your uh, uh, Ilmi number. And if it's completely free of charge, please do take it uh, as you uh, leave. Uh, the purpose of this uh, gathering, subhanAllah, it is to remember the selfless sacrifice of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. And it is an opportunity in the Islamic calendar to remind us about the story of Karbala, a story which is inspiring, a story which is heartwarming, a story which is Iman strengthening. And it is in these days, in the month of Muharram, that we remind ourselves of the story of Karbala, we share it, and perhaps most importantly, we reflect from it and we learn from it as well. Look, we as Muslims, we are not merely storytellers. You would have noticed that the Quran is full of stories from the prophets and messengers. The huge percentage of the Holy Quran is taken up by stories of the likes of Sayyidina Yusuf, of Sayyidina Ayyub, and indeed our messenger peace be upon you. The purpose of these stories is not just amusement and entertainment. The purpose of these stories in the Quran, in the Sunnah, from the Khulafai Rashidun, is to learn from them, to take heed from them, and reflect on them. And this is only possible because, subhanAllah, you will find that all Islamic stories, they are timeless. They are universal. They might have happened thousands of years ago, but subhanAllah, there is always a lesson for you today as well. When it comes to the story of Karbala, we find that it happened almost to the day, almost to the hour, 1,383 years ago. Yet, with the right mindset, when we study it in the correct manner, in what we find that today, in Birmingham, in 2022, there are lessons to be learned. The story never gets old. Each and every day, you find something from the story of Karbala which matters to you personally, which inspires you. And as you leave the masjid, your iman strengthens. And with that in mind, I just not allow me to share the lessons of Karbala in detail. I just want to share with you something very important in my eyes about the story of Karbala, the lessons we learned from it, and in particular what is going on in our current climate in this day and age. What we find is, and certainly when you read the story of Karbala, the story of the selfless sacrifice of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala, and you realize and you shed a tear when you hear about how many trials, how many tribulations, how much suffering and pain he went through. And what I want to share with you is this idea that subhanAllah, this proves that suffering is not necessarily a bad thing. It's not something to shun away from. It's not something to get downhearted about. Because subhanAllah, the grandson of the messenger, Ali Salatu he went through suffering. And why is it so important in this day and age? I don't think I need to spend too much time explaining this very climate that we are living in. Let's face it, we are all suffering in some way or another. It seems no one is immune. We always hear about depression, about anxiety, about sadness and worries in our community. We hear it from the young, we hear it from the old. We hear it from the males, we hear it from the females. We hear it from the married, we hear it from the unmarried. And all of this has come about now, we have given it a term now, we have given it a headline in the form of mental illness. And mental illness basically is just that word that we use when people are feeling down and out, when they're sad, when they're depressed, and they cannot understand and put a finger on why this is happening to them. So serious this problem has become in our communities is that Allahu Akbar, unfortunately we see this in wider society, we see this within our Muslim community now, is that people are suffering so much People are so sad that Allah, after they are even taking their own lives and they are committing suicide. We have to hear these stories, unfortunately. The suffering, the anxiety, because they cannot contextualize it. They cannot get their heads around it and understand what Allah is doing to them. Sometimes in extreme cases, and unfortunately again, it is happening in our community, 
people, when they are suffering, when they are suffering from depression, anxiety, mental illness, they are leaving Islam and they are adopting atheism. This is happening right now to these individuals who have poor to my side as well. SubhanAllah, I remind everyone that in the story of Sayyidina Imam Hussain, there is great comfort. There is great solace. There is great shakur for you and I. And I think it's the exact story we need to hear right now. And it's a great antidote to how we're feeling right now. And there are many reasons for that. You and I, we think we're suffering, we're going through hardship, we're going through difficulties. When we reflect upon the story of Karbala, Dhaqo Akbar, we find and we reach the conclusion that our suffering today is nothing in comparison to the suffering that Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu went through in the fields of Karbala. We know how gruesome, how horrific and how bloody that whole affair is. We don't need to spend time explaining that. Our ulama karam today and like throughout the years have done a wonderful job to explain the details of this. And what that does then, it gives us a bit of compare and contrast to our lives today. We are not suffering in the same way, the way that Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala and suffered. The second point, when we reflect upon the story of Imam Hussain and how it helps us, it's a reminder that Allah always tests his beloved. So what's closest to him? So if today we are suffering, subhanAllah, just look at it in the correct manner and remember, it means that Allah loves you. It doesn't mean Allah has deserted you. There is no reason to turn away from the zikr of Allah and come into the house of Allah. And this has always been the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ones who are most closest to him, you test them the most. And we see that certainly with the life and the sacrifice of Sayyidina Shuhada Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. Do not ever think that if I am suffering, it means Allah is angry with me. For when you pick up the Quran, you find that Allah Akbar Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was Khalilullah, the friend of Allah. What a beautiful title given to him. Yet at the same time, look how much trials, tribulations and difficulties he went through. It is because Allah loved him, he puts him through those trials. <coughs> Kareemullah, Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam, the one who spoke directly to Allah. The one who is mentioned numerous times in the Holy Quran. The one so close to our Lord, when you read the Quran, you do not find that he went through immense suffering. He went through in immense imtihanas. It is Allah's tariqah. When he loves you, he puts you so, so, so much tact. And certainly in the story of Karbala, we find this is the grandson of the messenger, Ali Subhanallah, he went through so much difficulty, he went through so much suffering, so many imtihanas. This very fact is an indication of how close he was to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not despair in this time. Contextualize what is happening to you when Allah is putting you through suffering. Don't always reach the wrong conclusion that this is an azab from Allah. If anything, this is the rahmah of Allah descending upon you. And we come to that final point. And this is so beautiful and it's a reminder of what happens when we suffer, when we go through anxiety, when we go to Parashani, we have to remember that suffering happens perhaps because Allah wants to hear your voice. Allah wants to hear your armies. Allah wants you to do the such that. Allah puts you through that difficulty knowing very well that that difficulty has now brought you to the house of Allah and made you do such that. Something which Allah loves. He has put you through that hardship so that you take the kashfi and read ya hindu ya kayu. He has put you through that difficulty so you get up in the middle of the night and perform the hajj prayer something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Suffering in that way Allah Akbar is not a bad thing, it is an indication that Allah wants to hear your zikr, He wants to hear your army. And what does that mean? It means that Allah loves you. Just like He loves Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. A beautiful hadith which explains what I have just mentioned in, in such a heartwarming matter in Ar Risala al Kushayriya, written by the great Sufi master Imam Kushayri, 
This work is one of the earliest treaties on Tasawwur. And a beautiful book, it has been translated into English as well. And basically, it is from the third and fourth century, and it introduces all of the terminology related to the field of Ihsan, related to the field of Tasawwur. A hadith sharif that I want to share with you, which can be found in the Risala of Imam Kushari, rahmatullahi alayhi. Uh, the message of peace be upon him explains that when a servant, when a gulam of Allah, when he does dua, and that servant, that Muslim and that movement, Allah actually loves him. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? He has a conversation with the archangel Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam. And he says to him, Ya Jibreel, this servant of mine who I love daily, he is asking me for du'as. He is making requests to me. Allah says to Jibreel alayhi salam, he says, don't answer his du'a yet. Delay his needs. Whatever he is asking for, don't give it to him yet. Allah Akbar said, even as Jibreel alayhi salam, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Are, why not? Why, why don't you want to give him what he wants? He is your beloved. He, he is someone who reads salah and someone who does dua. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in response to Sayyidina Jibri. He says, the reason why I don't want you to fulfill his request just yet, because I love his armies and I want to continue it. I want to continue watching his sajdas. I love his zikr. I love his coming to the masjid. And because if I fulfill his need that might disappear, I want him to continue praying to him. I love that very act. What is the showing? That sadness, depression, and anxiety. It's not a bad thing. It means that Allah wants to heal you, Amin. By the same gesture, Allah, apparently the same hadith, when a servant does a dua, and Allah is angry with him, Allah is naraz with him. What does Allah say to Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam? He says, Ya Jibreel, fulfill his request immediately, please. Whatever he is saying in his dua, please just answer it. Ensure that it is fulfilled. Jibreel says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, why are we fulfilling his need now? He doesn't even read namaz. He doesn't come to the masjid. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam? He says it's because I don't like the voice of this believer. I don't want to hear him. So it is better that we fulfill his request immediately, so I don't have to hear his voice. Allah. When we are suffering, then perhaps it's purely because Allah loves it when you are praying to him. Allah loves it when you are doing such stuff to him. Allah loves it when you are doing your ameen. And what this is doing is when you study the episode of Karbala, it helps you to understand 21st century problems. Like I mentioned at the beginning, no Islamic story is old. No Islamic story is outdated. No story from the Quran, Sunnah, and the Khulafai Rashidun is something that we say, well, we cannot apply this in 21st century Britain. Old stories, they have a hikmah behind them. And certainly, and I already shared one point, there are so many different lessons to be learned from the episode of Karbala, in particular problems which we consider as modern. When we have problems that are considered as modern problems, we always look for classical answers. Pain has always existed, it's how you contextualize it, it's how you interpret it. With all of that in mind, the suffering, there is two things, and Qibla Alam Asab had mentioned it beautifully in the speech before me. Allah has given you a formula to adopt when you are suffering. And it is a simple formula which no one can forget. A formula which is not an overload of information that you leave the masjid and you forget about it. Allah always keeps, keeps things very simple so you never forget them. And what is that formula when you are suffering? Sabah and Salah. It's ta'inu bis sabri wa salah. It's the same formula that worked for Imam Hussain It's the same formula that has worked for all the great Muslims of the world. Sabr is the inward trait that we try to adopt. Salah is the outward. 
if we have that uncertainty, we will not fail. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless these mahafid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen all of the staff, all of the wonderful ulama and bukhazi karam who are serving this community here in Birmingham. Ameen. A reminder as well that each and every month uh, we do a program here at Hazrat Sultan Bahu Trust, in particular for our youngsters. So information closer to the time will be released. It is myself who does it. Normally it happens on the first Sunday of every month in the evening. If you can attend the program, it would be an honor to host you. Jazakallah.